Hey, when you think of the biggest social media companies in the world, you probably think YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, WhatsApp, and Facebook. But what if I told you there was a social media platform that was far more powerful than any of these? Well, it is LinkedIn, the trump card of Microsoft. Come, let's analyze how Microsoft is still the real winner without any shorts or reels. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, WhatsApp, and Facebook are the most ubiquitous platforms in the world, boasting billions of users each. Microsoft's cloud platform acts as a key to a 2.5 trillion market cap. It has a slew of business segments that have helped propel the tech giant to such stratospheric heights. One of those businesses, LinkedIn, which Microsoft acquired in 2016, boasts roughly 800 million members, making it the world's largest professional network. And yet, while Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube have been slammed by lawmakers and privacy advocates, LinkedIn has largely avoided the same kind of scrutiny. Unlike other social media platforms, LinkedIn has never really had any sort of viral moment or explosion. But LinkedIn is also an extremely valuable group of users, given that everyone is generally well-accomplished and well-off. This makes for a highly monetizable user base that generates just under $15 billion every single year. Considering this, it's no wonder why Microsoft decides to purchase LinkedIn for $26.2 billion in 2016. A lot of data that Microsoft can collect within their social platforms within LinkedIn. It's not geared towards advertising, explained Ari Lightman, professor of digital media and marketing at Carnegie Mellon University Heinz College. A lot of it's geared towards making the product better, engaging with consumers and understanding holistic customer management and it's retained within the organization as opposed to shared with a variety of other folks. That's not to say that Microsoft doesn't make money, though. Advertisements on its social platform. It certainly does. In fiscal year 2021, advertising revenue surpassed $1 billion for the first time. But it's not only an advertising platform. LinkedIn also offers paid tiers for enhanced features like being able to send unlimited messages and browse people's profiles as well as job and job seeker capabilities. Those offerings will make up the majority of LinkedIn revenue which totaled $10 billion, or about 6% of Microsoft's total fiscal 2021 revenue. On the other hand, Facebook's parent Meta, Twitter, Snap, and TikTok are all about trying to siphon as much information from you as possible to specifically sell ads. And they're incredibly good at it, especially Facebook, which, alongside Google, dominates the online ad industry. Snapchat, Twitter, and Meta are all highly predicated on advertising, Lightman explained. Predicated on being able to be predictive with what consumers want. And this is meeting a perfect storm associated with privacy advocates, associated with consumer data and data rights and all those sort of things that are out there. Microsoft, he explained, is a diversified company where advertising is only a small sliver of its overall revenue. That's also helped Microsoft avoid the kind of antitrust scrutiny that Facebook, now Meta, is facing. See, while Microsoft has been building out LinkedIn, an admittedly far smaller and more niche social network than Facebook, Meta has been buying and competing platforms for general consumers. The Federal Trade Commission claims Meta's moves, in particular to purchase Instagram and WhatsApp, amounted to anti-competitive practices. The commission is now seeking to break apart the social media giant. LinkedIn has largely flown under regulators' radar. It's not a market leader in social, and it's more niche, because focused audience means it doesn't have to deal with this kind of issue that Meta has with its younger users. You're not going to find many kids who say LinkedIn makes them feel bad about their body image, unlike Instagram. That's not to say that LinkedIn hasn't had its share of problems. The data of some 700 million users was scrapped, though importantly not hacked by individuals seeking to sell it online earlier this year. Scrapping is different from hacking, and the data itself is usually publicly available and aggregated when scrapped. A hack would mean someone broke into LinkedIn servers and took private data. The company has also been stung by the spread of disinformation and user harassment. But unlike more generalized social platforms, LinkedIn has been largely insulated from controversies related to privacy and data rights. And that, according to at least one expert, is thanks to its business model. Talking about Microsoft's other lenses, Microsoft appears to be on the cusp of being something it hasn't been in a long time, cutting edge. It's a label the company lost a long time ago after a series of small startups grew to become Microsoft's biggest competitors. Google, for example, started out as a nimble, innovative upstart and eventually bested Microsoft in browsers, email, and mobile operating systems. But now Microsoft might be in the nimble, innovative company that beats Google in artificial intelligence. And it's all thanks to OpenAI. OpenAI is the hottest AI lab out there with one of the busiest and most exciting products, ChatGPT. And Microsoft is its very good friend. Recently, the two companies announced that Microsoft was investing $10 billion into OpenAI. That's on top of the $3 billion Microsoft has given OpenAI since 2019. 
and Microsoft is rumored to be adding ChatGPT to its Bing search engine. Yeah, that's right. The much maligned little used Bing might finally become a real competitor to Google search. Following the news of Microsoft's $10 billion investment, Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives wrote that ChatGPT is a potential game changer for Microsoft and that the company was not going to repeat the same mistakes of missing out on social and mobile that is made two decades ago. Microsoft is clearly being aggressive on this front and not going to be left behind, Ives wrote. There are parallels here, at least on the surface. Microsoft was once the dominant player in computer technology, with its Windows operating system being used by the vast majority of personal computers, and its Internet Explorer browser being used by the vast majority of web surfers. Then it got in trouble with the U.S. government, which sued Microsoft for using its dominant position to unfairly drive out competition and take over then nascent browser market by bundling Internet Explorer with Windows. The lawsuit tied up Microsoft for years, and the environment companies like Google emerged, putting out better products that people preferred in an exceptionally growing market. Microsoft still did just fine. It remains one of the most valuable companies in the world and is still more valuable than Google, but it doesn't have the same consumer-facing cachet it did before. Its enterprise clients drive the vast majority of its revenue through products like Microsoft 365 and Azure. Google, by contrast, is very visible too and much used by the general consumer, owing everything from Chrome to Gmail to YouTube. But now Google is the company that's having antitrust issues, facing multiple lawsuits from the federal government in almost every state and territory in the country that targets core parts of its business, including one that was filed just yesterday. Those may well clear the way for Microsoft to be the leader in an industry with a ton of potential. AI, companies like OpenAI, have made significant advancements in the technology and are now showing it off to the general public, while Google's competing products are practically nowhere to be found beyond updates on Google's blog. But Google has held back on giving them the kind of public demonstration that OpenAI has, saying it wants to ensure that its products are responsible and safe before unleashing them. Not helping matters was a claim from a now-former engineer that Google's chatbot technology, Lambda, has become sentient. Derek Levin, a professor of Carnage Mellon's business school who focuses on AI ethics, say, I think this is a very brilliant move from Microsoft CEO, Sadia Nadella. This is something that is definitely going to position Microsoft very well. But Levin warned, There remains the question of whether the benefits of these products outweigh their risk, and if rushing them to market to compete will enhance those risks. For now, LinkedIn is a massive win for Microsoft. It's drawing billions in revenue and it has done so without facing the kind of backlash that its social media peers have. LinkedIn is no doubt has several of cringe and toxicity due to everyone being hyper-competitive and looking out for themselves. But look what kind of productivity pushes it to cater to the audience. To learn more, to earn more, to acquire skills, to value time. This is definitely better than spending time spreading hate speech, watching reels, or engaging in Twitter wars. So if LinkedIn can keep growing while continuing to avoid the pitfalls of more general social sites, it could become the best acquisition Microsoft has ever made. So that's all for today. Do you agree with this? What do you think about Microsoft earning a huge sum without that much of social media ruckus? Comment down your thoughts. Don't forget to like and share. Stay tuned by subscribing for more, and we'll see you in the next one.